crossing the Sea of Galilee, and uh, they recognize, oh my, we forgot to bring our meal. We forgot to bring our lunch. What are we going to do? And Jesus is hearing this, but then he takes this opportunity to teach them. He says, I'm giving you a warning. He had just been with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and knew what they were really about. And he was giving them a warning, but he did it in a very interesting way. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they were so, you know, confused as they're often by Jesus and the way he spoke in riddles and parables. And so he's giving them an object lesson. You're so concerned about your stomach and don't you remember what just happened the other day? It was just a couple of chapters earlier that we're finding him doing all these miracles, feeding masses of people, 5,000 with five loaves of bread, and then 4,000 with seven loaves, and all the healings, the sight giving to the blind. And here they are forgetting that they are sitting with the bread of life himself, and they're concerned about bread. Where was their faith? And in that, Jesus is giving them a clear warning. What was the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? What I believe he's warning them against here is really the lack of faith in who he was as the person of God. Actually, their teaching was all about a religion of obedience to the law and a righteousness that came through obedience to the letter of the law. And I wonder about us, and again, I'm asking myself, have I adopted a religious life and belief that's really about a dead righteousness based on good deeds? And how tragic if the ministry that I have is just inviting people in exchanging one set of beliefs and religion for another that's really just as dead. It's all based on human effort. And this was very strongly pronounced to me on this trip again because almost everyone we encountered on our journey are from the Muslim faith. And that's exactly what the Prophet Muhammad exchanged for the message of Jesus for a, a back to a religion of doing good, following the, the, the example of the Prophet. And that's it. That's what you have to do to be submit to God, follow the example of the prophet, and that will be your entrance into paradise if God is favorable towards you. I'm always struck by this uh, other encounter Jesus had with the Pharisees, and he said, you know, you travel over land and sea to make one convert, but you make him twice the son of hell than you do of heaven. And that's my prayer, Lord. I'm the one who travels over land and sea all the time. But Lord, keep me from just making someone twice the son of hell because I've given them nothing but another religion to follow. But let it be the life of Jesus that I offer people. Oh Lord, let me never be guilty of my own pharisaical practices, my own legalism that exchanges the truth of God for a lie. And I want to ask you today, what is your faith based on? Are you simply living a Christian life that's really void of the life and power of transformation that's found in Christ himself? The living, breathing Jesus. Let's not be caught, let's be warned against that leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that's so easy and prevalent in our churches. I was in this Catholic part of the world, Malta, you know, very strong Catholic. They say, you know, the Apostle Paul himself brought the gospel to our island, which is true. And then we are in southern Italy and Spain, southern Spain, these places just steeped in the traditions and the history of the ancient church. And I just think these, many of these African migrants and, and refugees are coming and they have an understanding of Christianity that they've seen because of, you know, churches or 
cathedrals or they know about the Pope in Rome. And what they're encountering is, is all these layers and generations of traditions. And I think, how could they ever find about Jesus in light of all this? How could they ever be able to make this, the, the transition from, from their Muslim heritage and upbringing to enter into this, you walk into one of those cathedrals and you just see the complexity of it. The layers and layers of tradition and history. And we entered some of those cathedrals. And these dear people, um, I believe many sincere followers of Christ in those, in those traditions. But so many that are just caught up in the traditions and the patron saints that they pay homage to. And I think, what did we exchange the life of Christ for in our traditions. Now, evangelicalism is a little blip on the, the history of the longevity of the church, but I think, wow, what traditions are we steeped in that actually keep us from the real, living, transforming power of Jesus Christ? And it's my heart that when we go and we encounter these people, we're actually introducing them to the, the one who can truly transform their life and bring them healing.